Hello and welcome to Archie Corner. This is episode number 50. In today's video, we are going to discuss the required number of plumbing fixtures per the International Plumbing Code. Yes, I am referring to water closets, urinals, sinks, janitor sinks, drinking fountains, etc. We will look at examples of single occupancy groups and multiple occupancy group scenarios. If you want to find out more, don't go anywhere. You're about to find out. First, let's talk about a single occupancy scenario. In this scenario, we will assume that we have a one-story building. Although, as an FYI, you normally calculate plumbing count per floor even in multi-story buildings. So anyway, let's also assume that the entire building is used for offices, which per the building code, this is classified as business use or B occupancy. The office is 20,000 square feet. Now, we need to figure out the required plumbing fixture count. So how do we do this? It's simple. You have to go to the International Plumbing Code to do this. Section 403 is a section we are interested in. There is a chart that shows the requirements for the number of plumbing fixtures required, and it is based on occupancy groups and occupancy loads. On the second to the left column, you will see the classification. This references the occupancy group. In our case, an office building is a B occupancy group. The B stands for business. If you would like to know more about occupancy groups, check out Archie Corner episode number three. Next column to the right references the number of water closets and it is divided into male and female. Some occupancies have different number requirements for male and female, but in this case, the requirements happen to be the same for male and female. In this example, an office building is required to have one water closet per 25 occupants for the first 50 and one water closet per 50 occupants for the remainder that exceed 50. How exactly do you determine the number of occupants? Section 403.1 of the Plumbing Code states that the number of occupants shall be determined by the International Building Code. If you would like to know more on how to determine occupant loads, Per the International Building Code, see Archie Corner episode number 10 for details. But for now, let's assume that we have 134 occupants. Remember, these 134 occupants are total occupants, meaning total men and women combined. The International Plumbing Code section 403.1.1 states that to determine the occupant load of each sex, the total occupant load shall be divided in half. Therefore, we divide 134 in 2, which equals 67. 67 men and 67 women. And that is all folks. Now we have our occupancy load for each sex. The rest is simple math. Let's start with the water closets. As stated earlier, water closet count is the same for men and women. The requirement states that we need one water closet per 25 occupants for the first 50 occupants. Since we have 67 occupants, we are able to subtract 50. That means that we need two water closets for the first 50. Then it says that it's one fixture per 50 of the remainder. We already did the math and the remainder number of occupants is 17. Since we only have 17, the math would be 17 divided by 50. The result is that we need 0.34 for these 17 occupants. When we add 2 plus 0.34, we get a total of 2.34 water closets. Obviously, we cannot have 0.34 water closets. And to make this clear, section 403.1.1 states that the fractional numbers resulting from applying the fixture ratios of table 403.1 shall be rounded up to the next whole number. With this stated, our 2.34 gets rounded up to 3. So far now, we know that male and female restrooms require three water closets each. We now repeat this mathematical process for the lavatories, using the information on the chart. The next column over is similar to the water closets, and like the water closets, the requirement for male and female are the same. The number requirements are one lavatory per 40 occupants for the first 80, and one per 80 for the remainder exceeding 80. However, our occupant load does not exceed 80. 
it is only 67 occupants. The math is similar as before. Since we have 67 occupants and we need to divide them by 40 occupants, we need 1.675 lavatories. But again, we must round up, which means two lavatories are required. Next column over is for bathtubs and showers, but there are no requirements. Therefore, none are required per the plumbing code. Next column over is for drinking fountain requirements. This one states one per 100. However, please note that this is no longer divided by male and female. So, we must use the total number of 134 and divide it by 100. The result is 1.34. And same as before, we round up. Two drinking fountains are required. Last but not least, in the table is the other column. If we look into the requirements, we see the service sink here, often called a janitor sink or mob sink as well. This simply states one service sink, regardless of the occupancy count or size of the floor. This building would only require one service sink. There is a note here stating that for business and mercantile classifications with occupant loads of 15 or fewer, service sinks shall not be required. But that is not our case since our project has way more than 15 occupants. Now, we're almost done. But if you look at the chart, there are no other fixtures to calculate. So why are we not done yet? Do you see what is missing? If you said we are missing urinals, then you are correct. You will notice that the International Plumbing Code does not have a section for urinals. So how do you determine the number of urinals in the men's restroom? You will note that the chart has a note in the water closet section. It states that we must refer to section 424.2. Section 424.2 states, In each bathroom or toilet room, urinals shall not be substituted for more than 67% of the required water closets in assembly and educational occupancies. Urinals shall not be substituted for more than 50% of the required water closets in all other occupancies. Since our occupancy is not an assembly or educational occupancy, we can substitute up to 50% of the water closets for urinals. Since we need three water closets, we can substitute one water closet for a urinal. And boom, there you have it. That is all that we need to do to get the required number of plumbing fixtures. However, now that we know how to figure out the fixture count for individual occupancies, let's talk about figuring out the fixture count for multiple occupancies. For our next example, let's assume that in addition to the 20,000 square feet business area used for office that we just discussed, we also have 50,000 square foot of warehouse space, which per the building code is normally classified as storage space or as occupancy. For the purposes of this example, let's assume that the warehouse has an occupant load of 100 occupants. Again, we have to split that in half, so 50 male and 50 female. We already figured out the number of fixtures we need for the office. So for now, let's write down the number of fixtures that were needed. But one big difference is that for now, we will not round up the numbers. You'll see why later. Since we already know the mathematical process for getting the number of fixtures, we will not focus on the process, we will focus on the concept. So now let's update the table and see the section that talks about storage. For both male and female, one water closet is required per 100 occupants. This means we would require 0.5 water closet. Same thing goes for the lavatories. Both male and female require one lavatory per 100 occupants. This means we need 0.5 lavatories. No bathtub or showers are required. One drinking fountain is required per 1,000. And remember, there is no separation for male and female, so we use a total occupant load of 100. This means that we need 100 divided by 1,000 equals 0.1. Finally, it states that we need one service sink. Section 403.1.1 of the Plumbing Code states in part, For calculations involving multiple occupancies, such fractional numbers for each occupancy shall first be summed up and then rounded up to the next whole number. And that is exactly what we did. 
We waited until we had both occupancies calculated before we rounded up. So first we add the numbers up and then we round up. So let's start up. Water closets were 2.83, so we round up to 3. Lavatories were 2.175, and we round up to 3. Drinking fountains were 1.44, so we round up to 2. And service sinks are just 2, so we don't need to round up because it's already rounded up. You see how this is beneficial? The number of water closets did not change. We still need 3 water closets. The number of drinking fountains did not change either. We only need two. However, we did add enough to have one more lavatory and one more service sink. Now, just as an FYI, in most jurisdictions that I've worked with, even though we are noted here to require two service sinks, it is often allowed to reduce to one if it's the same tenant. The plumbing code is not very clear and could be debated. So just know that a plan checker could potentially ask for two. But oftentimes, I've only been required to provide one if it's the same tenant. I would be very interested in knowing how other jurisdictions apply this. So if you're able to, please provide a comment in the comment section so that we can all benefit from it. Moving on, now you have the knowledge to calculate plumbing fixture counts. And if you had a third or a fourth occupancy, you would do the same exact thing for all occupancies, but you would round up at the end after you added up all the fractions. This is very important. Otherwise, your plumbing count might be higher than what you really need. And there it is, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked the video. I will see you next time. But for now, this is Archie Corner signing out.